Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and I decided today was time for a little R&R, &R, a royal review. So I have about 21 typewriters currently at the time of filming this, and a lot of the typewriters in my collection are Royal Typewriters or Smith Corona Typewriters. And that's because that's what's popular in my area. I am in the US, in Western Pennsylvania, so a lot of brands around here are the American brands, they're the ones from the 1950s. There are also some of the cheaper models that would have been sold of typewriters. So a lot of the typewriters I end up with are Royal brand typewriters. Now this is part of my Royal collection. I have a few older models as well, including two Royal Tens and a Royal Victory. But those are the kind of typewriters you would use in a Stephen King novel to kill somebody. And these are more of what I call the brown typewriters. So here are some of the Royal typewriters from my collection. We're gonna go through them, talk a little bit about them and their design, their history, and then also talk about the Royal Company. So the Royal brand was started in about 1904, and in 1906 they sold their first typewriter, a Royal Standard. In the 1950s, about 1954, Royal actually teamed up with McBee and made the Royal McBee Typewriter Company. In the 1970s, the Royal brand was sold to Volkswagen along with the Adler Tippa. And then in the 1980s, Olivetti acquired both the Royal brand for typewriters and the Tippa brand from Volkswagen. In 2004, Royal once again became a privately owned United States company, and they have since started manufacturing some newer typewriters that are not exactly the same caliber of quality that you might get in some of these older Royal typewriters, but they are producing new typewriters under the Royal brand name. Now these are the typewriters from the 1950s and the 1960s. These are a lot of the ones that would have survived in this area, and a lot of them look similar. So let's go through the collection a little bit. The oldest typewriter on this table is from 1951, and that is my Royal Quiet Deluxe Diana. She's a 1951 Royal Portable typewriter. Now the Royal Quiet Deluxe was made from 1939 to 1959, and in the 1950s they started introducing some more colors around 1955, and there were six different color variations. But this typewriter is in the plain original gray with the crinkle paint finish, and it has gray keys. Now the Royal Quiet Deluxe was one of the first typewriters to feature the magic margins on the portable typewriters. Now this one's from 1951, it's a little bit older of this style of Royal Quiet Deluxe. You can tell that because of these wing-shaped badges around some of the selectors on the front of the typewriter. But this typewriter body might seem familiar to you for a few reasons. And that's because it's also the same body design that was used on a few other Royal Portable designs, including the Arrow, the Champion, and the Royal Aristocrat. Over here I have the 1955 Royal Aristocrat Georgiana from my collection, and she features the same body design as the Royal Quiet Deluxe, but in a little bit more of a brown crinkle paint finish with green keys. And you can see here around the selectors on the front, there are no wing badges. Now the Royal Aristocrat did come in some different versions prior to this particular design. If you have a 1940s Royal Aristocrat, it looks very different, but the body design has always been very similar to the Royal Quiet Deluxe. And some of the older versions also feature maybe glass top keys, but mine are all plastic. From 1955, we move on to 1956. This is my Royal HH Elite typewriter, Huxley. He's from 1956, he's a big, sturdy, hefty desk manual typewriter. I love him. The HH Elite, HH is the model name, Elite stands for the size of the typeface. So in typewriters there are two sizes of font or typeface. You have Pika, which is about 10 point font, which means 10 characters per inch, and then you also have Elite, which is a 12 point size font. So this typewriter, the HH Elite, has the Elite type typeface, try saying that 10 times fast, which means it's about a 12 point font, 12 characters per square inch, and I named him Huxley. From 1956 to 1957, am I seeing double or do I have another Royal Aristocrat? So I purchased the original Royal Aristocrat for about $25, and then I was in an antique store a couple weeks ago and I found another Royal Aristocrat for another $25, so I also purchased it. This is my Royal Aristocrat named Marie, 
and she features some differences between the 1955 and the 57 model. Namely, you'll see on the front the red around the royal badge name. She also has red margin release buttons on the top of the carriage. What I find really interesting is actually the back design of these two typewriters. They are the same model, they're both royal aristocrats, but in just two years between these two models, they changed the design of the back panel. On the Royal Aristocrat from 1955, that back panel all comes off in one piece. There's four screws on the side and you can take off that back piece. But on the Royal Aristocrat from 1957, there's this extra line design here and the very back of the typewriter does have a different kind of royal logo than that of the 1955 version. And here on the bottom, you can see that they affix to the case differently. The 1955 has an extra lip of metal underneath that gap where it fits into the case, and the 1957 version just has a hole at the bottom where it attaches into that portable case. Now, something starts to look different on this table when you get into the 1960s. So from 1957, we go into 1961 with the Royal Futura 800. This is my Royal Futura named Lord Laird Fortune Covey. Named so because the original designer of the Royal Futura model was named Laird Lord, no, his name was Laird Fortune Covey crazy name for a typewriter designer, but that was the man who designed the Royal Futura. Originally, the Royal Futura is made of all aluminum, which makes it more lightweight. My favorite feature of this typewriter is actually that you can press that Royal Badge logo on the front, which is plastic, and it releases the top cover. I just think that's so snazzy, and I really like that on the Royal Futura design. That's one of my favorite typewriters. And finally, from 1961, we go to a typewriter I don't actually own, it belongs to my mom, but this is the Royal Lux 425 from 1963. Now the Royal Lux uses the same body as the Royal Futura, but it was actually manufactured in Holland as opposed to the United States. And what's different about the Royal Lux compared to the Royal Futura is that this top cover does not come off with the badge on the front. There are some design elements that also look different, but on the Royal Lux you actually have to lift off that whole panel as opposed to hitting the button on the front of the Royal Futura. And that typewriter is currently unnamed. If you have suggestions, go for it in the comments below. So that's my Royal Collection, my brown typewriters. Now, which are my favorites? I really love the Royal Futura design. I love the look of it. To me, it looks a lot like the Olympia typewriters with that slanted side casing that differs from the colored top piece. The Royal Futura also came in several different colors, including a blue color, a green color, and a color called mocha that actually looks pink. And I really love the design of the Futura. I love the functionality of it, and this one works really well. I was very happy to get it. That was a $12 Facebook Marketplace buy. I was absolutely thrilled with that purchase. When it comes to the Royal Portables, I've had a lot of repair and technical issues on my Royal Portables, all with this Royal Quiet Deluxe body shape. I have never had a good experience with this shape of typewriter. And I know a lot of people love their Royal Quiet Deluxes. It just doesn't seem to be a typewriter that I enjoy. And I think that's because of all the repair problems I've had over the years. Uh, this typewriter over here, the Royal Quiet Deluxe, I've actually showed you guys how to clean this typewriter before. I originally thought it was brown. Turns out it's gray. But it does still have some issues in it in typing that I just can't figure out how to adjust. When we move over here to the Royal Aristocrat, I had to replace the draw band on this typewriter. And and it took me a really long time to figure out how to do that. And then when we moved to this 1957 Royal Aristocrat, when I bought it, the platen knob was actually broken and I had to repair that. So that was a challenge for me. But then there's also seems to be some issues on moving the carriage as it types. These are difficult to work on. They're tiny. There's a lot of pieces that just are in there kind of crazy. It's hard to get to stuff. I have not enjoyed the process of working on a Royal machine in a repair process. I really do love the Royal HH Elite, my Huxley over here. Uh, he's just the smoothest typer I've ever had. He's the most consistent. He's also one of the largest typewriters I've owned. He is massive and he needs to be set on a desk somewhere and used on a daily basis, but he's a great typewriter. When it comes to naming these typewriters, I started out not naming them after royal figures. The first typewriter on this table that I actually received was this 
uh, HH Elite Huxley. I received him for Christmas as a gift and I named him Huxley after the author of A Brave New World but I loved this typewriter and the next royal I got after that would have been um I have so many typewriters probably the Quiet Deluxe which I was gifted so that was like a zero dollar typewriter and I named her Diana after Princess Diana. Following Diana, I ended up with Georgiana over here, who is named after the figure from The Duchess, if you've ever seen that film, Keira Knightley. I read a bunch of biographies about female characters from history, and one of my favorite characters to read about is actually The Duchess of Devonshire, Georgiana, which is why I named this typewriter that. She's someone who was a big political figure at the time. She was friends with Marie Antoinette. She was friends with uh, Perdita, who was an author and poet from the time. And that's why I named her Georgiana. Georgiana, the actual figure, was also a little bit crazy, as is this typewriter. And then this typewriter over here, the Royal Aristocrat from 1957, I named Marie after Marie Antoinette because I also read her biography. <laughs> and she was friends with Georgiana, which is why I've named them appropriately. From 1957, the Royal Future 800, I named Covey after the designer Laird Fortune Covey, and I added Lord on the beginning to make it a little bit more aristocratic. And again, that typewriter over there is unnamed, and it belongs to my mother, who also has a YouTube channel. If you're interested, you should go check her out on the Suburban Chateau here on YouTube. I've linked her channel down below. When it comes to the typing experience on a Royal typewriter, it really depends on the machine. I really enjoy the typing process I get on the Royal Future 800, and it's pretty similar to the Royal X25, but those are both vastly different from the other Royal portables. The portables over here, the Quiet Deluxe and the Aristocrat, I've not had the greatest typing experience. Even when it's on touch control one, it still has a little bit of a, almost like a hiccup or a kinky kind of nature to typing on it. It's not the smoothest typer ever and I found that they are prone to having repair issues. So that's the Royal Collection, well at least the brown ones. If you're interested in more typewriter content, we have some more videos on this channel featuring some of these typewriters, so you should go check those out. Also, you should follow us on Instagram at just.my.typewriter where you can see more about the typewriters in my collection. Follow my mom on YouTube at the Suburban Chateau. She does some design videos, some DIY videos. I think I'm in a few of them. I'm not really sure. I want to thank you so much for watching today and remind you, you're just my type. Writer.